Xiaomi's flagship series has always been heavily anticipated due to their spec-heavy lineup, but with a more competitive price point. Although, in recent years, that hasn't been the case. Well, at least for the price positioning part. However, Xiaomi has invested quite a lot more in ambitious projects, like their continued partnership with Leica in the past two years. This remains to be at the heart of the Xiaomi 14 series. What up guys, Miguel here from Yugitech, and let me explain why the Xiaomi 14 and its triple Leica camera system deserve your attention. From the outside, nothing much has changed since the Xiaomi 13. It's hard to spot the difference between the two unless you see them side by side. Our review unit is in this jade green colorway and we really like it. The Xiaomi 14 almost looks and feels very similar to its predecessor, the Xiaomi 13. Same length and width but the former is slightly thicker and a teeny bit heavier. We get the same glass on glass body with a solid metal frame, Gorilla Glass Victus in front and 3D curved glass at the back. It also features an IP68 rating for dust and water resistance of up to 1.5 meters and it can be left submerged underwater for as long as 30 minutes. Just don't take it to the pool or the beach for a dip because there's no guarantee against chlorinated water or salt water. The Xiaomi 14 sports a cleaner profile along the side so you won't see any ports on the top or left side. The power button and volume rocker are found on the right side, while the USB Type-C port, primary mic, SIM card slot, and speaker grills are at the bottom. The second speaker grill is neatly hidden along the edge of the glass display at the top middle corner, so users won't really notice it unless they're looking for it. The metal frame is a lot more prominent now with its flat sides, giving the phone an overall more industrial look, while the 3D glass back panel has a slightly tapered edge. This all-glass exterior and polished metal frame made the device very prone to fingerprints and smudges. Like, you can see there. From a design perspective, we like the Xiaomi 13 better than this year's iteration for its thinness and our preference for smaller camera modules, but that's just us being nitpicky. The Xiaomi 14 also gets the same 6.36-inch LTPO AMOLED display with a resolution of 2670 by 1200 pixels and a pixel density of 460 pixels per inch. This means we can set the panel's refresh rate to dynamic or we can even manually set it to either 60 or 120 hertz. We can also toggle sunlight mode where the display further adjusts the brightness range under very bright environments. Xiaomi claims it gets a thinner bezel at just 1.71 millimeters at the chin due to the advanced FIAA technology that integrates panel circuits within the display instead of below. It's got a vibrant screen, great contrast, vivid yet accurate colors, and a very bright display that is still viewable outdoors even under direct sunlight. Oh, and the peak brightness of this device goes up to 3000 nits, and that's with the aforementioned sunlight mode enabled. For biometrics, users can utilize face and or fingerprint unlocking options. The fingerprint sensor is placed slightly lower on the screen and takes some time to get used to when holding with one hand. We also have to press firmly on the screen for it to register a fingerprint. The Xiaomi 14 also comes with stereo speakers that are found at the bottom and in the call earpiece situated in the top bezel of the display. The audio here is pretty loud, and even at full volume, the sound clarity is spot on, crisp, and well balanced with support for Dolby Atmos. Just don't expect good bass from this one, although we can definitely say that the overall audio performance is pretty good for casually listening to music, watching movies, or playing games. Xiaomi also claims a quad mic array in this device. The myriad of microphones enables better noise cancellation for when on calls or recording videos. Last year's Xiaomi 13 had a triple camera system, two of which are Leica engineered. This year's Xiaomi 14 has a similar triple camera system and all of them are Leica tuned. With all three combined, you get an equivalent Leica Vario Sumilux lens with an equivalent focal range of 14mm to 75mm and an aperture of f1.6 to 2.2. The main shooter is a 50 megapixel light fusion 900 image sensor that gets an equivalent focal length of 23 millimeters and an aperture of f1.6. This sensor is capable of high dynamic range at 13.5 exposure value and a native 14-bit color depth. The second shooter is a 50 megapixel Leica floating telephoto camera that supports 1x, 2x, and 3.2x zoom. The third camera is another 50 megapixel Leica ultra wide sensor that has a maximum 
115 degrees field of view. Right off the bat, we noticed some great improvements in the camera quality compared to last year's Xiaomi 13. The main camera focuses quick and provides great dynamic range. Colors are a little on the saturated side, especially when shooting landscapes like dense forests and mountains like in our sample shots. The photos impressed us with the details and color accuracy. Low light shots are very clean and with little to no noise. Subjects are in focus and we don't get blurry shots even when shooting handheld in standard photo mode. We still get some notable features that come with the camera including the two photography styles, Leica Authentic and Leica Vibrant Look. Both styles look pretty good but users may prefer the vibrant look for more pop. As for videos, the phone can shoot at 8K at 24 frames per second and or record in Dolby Vision up to 4K at 60 frames per second. Most of our samples were shot in 4K at 60p. The videos look very crisp and smooth with good dynamic range, seen from the blue skies nearing the sunset to the mountains in the background and trees in the foreground. It's all properly exposed and retain a lot of detail. The Xiaomi 14 also features slow-mo video recording. Users can shoot at either 960 frames per second at 1080p or if resolution doesn't matter too much for you. There's even a 1920 frames per second at 720p or HD. The selfie shooter is a 32 megapixel in-display camera with an aperture of f2.0 and an 89.6 degree field of view. With this selfie camera, we can toggle between the default 1x or get a wider shot at 0.8x. This is a sample video using the Xiaomi 14 selfie or front-facing sensor. We're shooting at 4K at 60 frames per second. And this one is the 0.8x for a wider shot. I mean, it's not that much wider, but it's definitely wider. Right out of the box, the Xiaomi 14 comes pre-installed with HyperOS 1.0. HyperOS isn't that different compared to MIUI 14, and even if the users were a long-time Xiaomi adopter, they may need to take a closer look in order to notice most changes. Compared to our Redmi Note 13 Pro Plus, which is still on MIUI 14 by the way, the home screen and app icons have been changed a bit. They seem a little less saturated. Some apps have a bit more details, and the icons themselves are rounder. And users will also notice some icons have been redesigned like the Photos app and Camera app. And when pulling down the drop-down menu, we can notice a lot of changes here as well. Xiaomi Smart Devices is now replaced with Google Home. They added a music playback widget, and icons no longer have labels, which is a bummer. We no longer need to scroll right to get to see the other shortcuts because in HyperOS, it's an infinite scroll down when you add more items in the quick access menu. Other notable changes include the weather app which has been redesigned to reflect the actual weather conditions, the tools app folder has been renamed to system apps folder, and all the app icons have been redesigned in there as well. Shall we claim some AI enhancements integrated into the device but so far the only thing we noticed is the AI image engine in the display settings. Most importantly, HyperOS does not have any pre-installed third-party games or Chinese apps that we used to see with MIUI before, which is a big relief. Oh, and here's an easter egg. Xiaomi forgot to change the default file naming scheme of screenshots so when taking said screenshots, HyperOS still names the file with MIUI in its name, which could be an easter egg as we interpret or a mistake on the software guru's part. Powering the Xiaomi 14 is the latest Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 chipset. This SoC is an octa-core chip paired with an Adreno 750 GPU, 12GB of LPDDR5X memory, and up to 512 gigs of UFS4 internal storage. Our review unit comes in the 12GB plus 512GB combo. This configuration is very common among flagship devices and performance is top-notch across all aspects of the device. Load up a couple dozen apps and the Xiaomi 14 doesn't even choke thanks to the 12GB of RAM and the additional 6GB of extended RAM. Benchmark scores are also great with Antutu scores hitting almost 2 million points and as you can see in this table, these scores are slightly better than the ones we got from the Xiaomi 13 running a Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chipset. All these numbers translate to a very fast and powerful device, whether you're playing games like Genshin Impact, Asphalt 9, or even just Mobile Legends. You can dial the graphics to the highest settings and enjoy the game without noticing any lags or hiccups. However, from casual experiences, you wouldn't really see or feel the difference in terms of performance. 
As usual, the Xiaomi 14 comes with a plethora of connectivity options. It features a dual nano SIM card tray with 5G support, NFC, Bluetooth 5.4, and Wi-Fi 7 compatibility. SIM configurations can either be SIM 1 plus SIM 2 or SIM 1 plus an eSIM. We haven't noticed any options to use two eSIMs though. When we originally unboxed the device, we were looking for the inparent port at the top end but could not find it, thinking Xiaomi might have removed it in this version. Surprisingly, the IR blaster is actually still there, merely hidden within the camera, which is why when potential users start the remote app and pair it with their appliances, a few additional steps are required during the pairing process. With an internal battery capacity of 4,610 mAh, the Xiaomi 14 can handle any tasks we throw at it for the entire day. Charging the phone to full using the 90 watt hypercharger takes just 31 minutes, and with the 50 watt wireless charger, it only takes 46 minutes. There is reverse wireless charging too, for those wondering. And in our PC Mark Work 3.0 battery test, the device scored 15 hours and 24 minutes at 50% brightness, volume muted, and in airplane mode to account for mixed usage variables. That's significantly better compared to the results we got from the Xiaomi 13 under the same scenarios. Using our own video loop test, the phone lasted 29 hours and 10 minutes under the same conditions. As for gaming, we played a couple ranked games in Mobile Legends that lasted a total of 38 minutes with a reduction of about 10% at 50% brightness, 50% volume, and utilizing Wi-Fi. That translates to about 6 hours and 20 minutes of total gameplay in a single full charge, which isn't bad at all. Xiaomi seemed to focus on two important aspects with the Xiaomi 14. First is performance, second is the camera system. Whether that's enough of a reason to upgrade is debatable. However, like many other flagships released in the past year, the upgrades might seem incremental to others. Here's what we know for a fact. The Xiaomi 14 is still a beast of a phone. It checks out everything you'd ever look for in a flagship smartphone. Top-notch performance, a nice design, a great display, an impressive set of cameras, and an improved battery. Those looking for a powerful smartphone in a compact form factor should definitely make the Xiaomi 14 one of their top choices for a new flagship in 2024. And to wrap up this review, what we liked about this device is its impressive performance, super bright display, great camera quality, its design and compact size, and improved battery life. We don't really like how it's slightly thicker and heavier than last year's Xiaomi 13, and we also found HyperOS a little underwhelming, and in a way, some of us in the office feel it's almost insignificant at this point. In hindsight, these aren't huge issues, but we thought it was worth mentioning. So, what did you guys think of the Xiaomi 14? Is it way better than the Xiaomi 13 that you'd consider upgrading from that device? Let us know in the comments section below. And if you enjoyed this video or found it informative, be sure to smack that like button, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and hit that bell icon so you get notified of our future uploads. Uh, don't forget to follow us on our socials. That's Facebook, Instagram, X, and TikTok for the latest tech news and reviews. Once again, this has been Miguel, and I'll see you in the next one.